Joining us today on Superheroes of Science, we're excited to welcome Kristen Morey. Kristen studied at Purdue University. She studied computer science, mathematics, and statistics and graduated in May of 2018. And she's currently a machine learning engineer with the Houston Astros. So we're so, so excited to have you today, Kristen. And, Thank you. Uh, so I, I guess machine, learn machine learning. Yeah. What, what, yeah. What's machine learning? <laughs> so machine learning is a subcategory of computer science. Um, and it's kind of intricately related to computer science, artificial intelligence, statistics, math. It's kind of got a little bit of everything. And basically, machine learning is using computers to make decisions. So it's, uh, you know, my job and job of a lot of people out there to teach your, your computer programs how to make educated decisions and do it quickly, efficiently, and um, accurately. Most said, teach the computer to make educated decisions? Yeah. So, for example, um, when you're making predictions, a lot of times these models are going to be predicting something. So you, you feed it some data, some information about whatever you want to learn about, and it's supposed to, you know, give you, give you an answer back. Uh, and so you're, you're programming, um, you're writing a program or altering code to tell it is it like is it like just a bu whole bunch of if then statements for math type of thing uh it can be it it depends i mean there's several different algorithms you can uh go by and it de all depends on the problem so that's that's something that i have to be knowledgeable about is what's the best application in this case you know do i want to is a bunch of if then statements the right way to go or do you want to do something a little more complex um, and on top of that you have to you know make sure your data is clean and you're not feeding it you know any anything inaccurate or anything unnecessary so there's a, a, a bit more to it than that and um, as, as most things I would expect <laughs> I didn't think it would be too straightforward <laughs> So it, what all kind of fields is machine learning being used in these days? It seems to be a hot word, but no one seems to totally understand what it is or what it's people do yeah, with it. Yeah, and I think that part of the reason why it's, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around is it because I think it's being used in all fields. It can kind of be applied in a lot of places. Because when you think about it, the computer is just seeing numbers, and those numbers can represent anything. For me, they represent baseball stats, but, you know, for Google, they're users and clicks and for, you know, the medical field, there's, you know, I don't know, heart rate and whatever, you know. It's, mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I think it's, it's a hot topic because it can be used in a lot of different ways and people are starting to figure that out. That's a really good point. Are there like specific programs that, that you work with or um, platforms that you use to, to do these things? Yeah, and that's going to be personal taste or whatever your company uses and, and pays for. Um, I know in my group, we use a lot of uh, Python code and Python specific libraries for machine learning are like PyTorch or Hear Us. Um, uh, my group also uses R, which kind of uses the same, same little libraries there. Um, there's uh, Microsoft and, and Amazon both have their, you know, cloud methods of, of computing, um, and they offer some machine learning services, and I'm sure others do as well. So there's a lot of options out there, and I'm sure, like I, like I said, since it's a hot um, topic right now, I'm sure they're growing. and all depends on your situation. So what ty kinds of information do you get from the machine learning? Are you... Um, like looking at sp like different players, like specific statistics, and I don't, I don't know. I don't want to lead to I like to see how they're performing from one game to the next. Or yeah, I mean that's the ultimate question for any of us in the sports field is how is this person going to perform? Because you know sometimes the decline of great players comes so fast, and is there a way to see that coming? Is it totally random, or when when you're drafting players in from college or high school? how do we know who's going to be good in 10 years? Like that's a long time. A lot can happen. So uh, that's really the big challenge, I think, but 
we find ways to use it in in other places too, as you mentioned, like in in game strategy. Um, you know, where's the best place for our our fielders to be positioned? I know um, one one big topic in baseball is the shift. So you see, like infielders stand at a different location than you know traditionally you see, and and that's from research and development departments like mine. They find that you know move if a batter has a tendency to hit in a certain direction, you're going to want to move your, your fielders over there. So it's, it's used all over the place. See, I guess when, when I found out that you were um, machine learning for Houston Astros, I guess I just assumed it was be you were, you know, tracking what type of people who would come to the games and, in in the income, how much they would like spend at games. So yeah, I didn't even think about it being actual. You're pl scouting, well, your players and upcoming players, and yeah, uh, there there is a group that does what you're describing, the business analytics group, and then they're using the same methods that we are. But again, it's numbers. They just, in their case, mean attendance or, you know, uh, ticket sales, whatever. Oh wow, it's. Well, so how do you, so how does the communication chain then work? So if you're looking at, at player performance and then you mentioned like maybe they might shift on the field depending on the batter who's coming up, how does it get from you working in your office where you're looking, you know, running the numbers and looking at what this is to then down to the coaches and players where they're, do, do you have, do you guys, do you meet directly with the coaches or is there, how does that work? I don't personally meet directly with the coaches. There are a couple of people in my department for sure that uh, do maybe not in person, especially not now, but um, are in direct contact with them. And if not, we'll go to the scouts or scouting analysts, as we like to call them in Houston. Um, and they'll go to the players or to the general manager and they'll go to the coaches. So it's probably one step removed. Um, there might be one middleman in between us and, and the clubhouse. Wow, that's cool. So how how big how big is your uh, group of people looking at all these variables that deal with players? How big is that group? I think the research and development team is around fourteen or fifteen now, um, and we're I believe in baseball we are one of the bigger ones. I think Tampa Bay and Los Angeles, who are both in the World Series this year, um, have the biggest. If I am correct, I think New York. Yankees are up there, and um, then then probably us somewhere around the there. Wow! I, wow! I, I had no idea it'd be that many people. Um, when I joined, we were seven or eight, I think, and then okay. we've been expanding. I, I've only been here, you know, less than three years, and I'm kind of one of the older ones now. <laughs> <laughs> wow! So, are the, how? I guess. If you have that many people working on the numbers, that's got to be, are you, do you each look at, I'm assuming you, you would each look at different pieces then and then um, communicate that together and then that gets like a report or, or like what does your day, is there a typical day or a typical uh, month? Kind maybe? of. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit, I mean, it's kind of a desk job, you know, most of the time I'm sitting in front of a computer and I'm programming and then um, normally we all, we're all in a room together so we can collaborate a little bit. A uh, couple of meetings. It's it's like an office job in that regard, um, but and we do have longer term projects we look at. But every day is different in that you kind of have to be prepared for something to to be thrown your way that you weren't expecting, and you have to be re ready to pivot at any moment. Because if it's um, September twenty eighth and the playoffs start in three days, and we need something for the playoffs in three days, like it's you got to be ready for that. Wow, and so. What I mean, it's, it sounds like it's a lot more than just hiring. Then, with that, you know, the information would be used for. What all is the information used in particular for uh, what what you guys are? I want to say collecting, but I guess it's teaching the machines to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's like I, what I said earlier. We're looking at player performance is always the big one, and there's cause it's so hard to predict, especially several years out. Um, and then we have different data depending on, you know, obviously our in-house players we have the most data on. And then high schoolers, you hardly have any because they don't have, you know, the technology that we do. So you're trying to accommodate 
the differences there. Um, that's the big one, but there's a lot of, you know, in-game strategy and even like evaluation on the, not, not quite on the business side, but on the, like the finance side, how much should we pay this guy if we think he's going to perform like this? So there's a lot of levels. So it, Boy, that's... Will. good. Sorry, Sarah, go ahead. No, I just, I'm just, that's all. I'm just thinking like that, that pay is tied then to these data that's going through from, you know, basically from predictions about, you know, that while well, you're, so you're giving them the computer the information and then it's plotting that out and then that can affect player salary. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's a, definitely a big deal because we don't want to, no, it's the boss man's money. We don't want to mismanage right. that. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so will it be even be things like uh, like batting order based on where you are? I mean, if if like I was on the team and every time we were in a certain city, I, I tended to do a little worse, or every time the weather was different, I tended to do a little worse. Then will will your machines then be predicting that also, like individual behavior for isolated gaming too? Um, I don't know if that's more machine learning. It's definitely stuff we look at. You know, if someone says, "Hey," This person's in a slump lately. Just look into it. I mean, that's not a lot to go off of as as far as programming something, but you can start, you know, peeking into the data and seeing if there's something you can automate through machine learning, or if sometimes it just jumps out at you without that. Um, but yeah, we're we're looking at individual things like that on occasion. That's one of the when I mentioned you have to be prepared for. Uh, I hate the baseball metaphor. You have to be prepared for a curveball to be thrown your way. Um, <laughs> That's, that's definitely one of them, is those isolated incidents. I would say we should see how many of those uh, baseball terms we could throw in. but it, It's a lot. You'd I'm, be surprised. We'll use them. One of my coworkers joked once about putting out like a swear jar, but it's a baseball metaphor jar. <laughs> like you knock it out of the park or I don't know. There's, oh, that's there's good. So that's yeah. so funny. Uh, well, you just, I just say you just mentioned that that might not be I think you said that might not be something that would be necessarily machine learning, but something you still look into. But what are, like, can you give us a couple of examples of what are, like, pretty clear um, machine learning things that you would, be, like, projects that you would be looking at? So you, you, you really want to look for something you have a big sample size for so that the machine can learn to see the trends um, and all the patterns. So something like an individual player over the last, you know, three weeks. Um, and their performance might not be enough. Um, or, I mean, it might be. It, it, it all depends. Um, but that's something you want to look at. And and I guess things that um, can easily fit the algorithms that, that we've been trained on, um, whether that's categorizing into groups or giving out, you know, one specific number like say how many days in the year do you think they're going to be injured and it's going to spit out one number um it, it's really it's hard to say because it's a very case-by-case thing okay yeah. it uh it's I, I guess i'm still trying to get my head around the machine's learning part and so are you um so do you guys feed the data to them or are you telling the computer, hey, go look at these data sets as soon as they pop up and then tell me the stuff I've told you to tell me? It, it, so we, do you guys all do both? Yeah, it's a little of both. I mean, for certain systems we have in place, it's it's very automated. You know, we get the data, it goes straight to the uh, the algorithms and then the algorithms put it straight into the database and then it's ready for us. Um, obviously, a lot more... Other things are in development still, so we kind of have to, to piece it together ourselves while we work on the data flow part of it. Um, so, yeah, it's a little, little of everything, depending on how long things have been in place and such. So are these running off, like, supercomputers somewhere? I mean, I, I would think it would take a lot of processing to be able to yes. do the things you're telling it to do. Yes. Uh, most of it is done not on our little laptops, but uh, elsewhere. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to note that because I know when I hear like here on campus, the faculty talking about running their models and stuff, and uh, it, it, I mean, some of these could take a week to run one 
in oh, yeah. one model in, or or more i know and it, for me to fathom a, I, I get really annoyed if i have to wait you know 30 seconds for my laptop to start up oh, right. so, <laughs> yeah uh, hmm. yeah and so i, I didn't know how long huh it can be hard to have patience with these things and and definitely uh speeding things up is always something we're you know going back to if sometimes you can't afford to wait a week for for information especially in this um climate where you have to be mid-season and like i said you could be out of the playoffs in a week we don't have time so speed and efficiency is definitely a big concern not only in my industry i'm sure everywhere because time is money right and so yes. it, with, with the speed being a, a variable that you have to keep in mind, I know it's like when we talked to Mike Baldwin about the weather, you know, and he talked about the weather models and he's like, well, there's, it, you have to tell it to ignore certain things in order to get it back fast enough. Are there some variables that you can't put into your machine for learning because it would just processing would take too long? So then are you kind of like trying to do a balancing game amongst these variables to see which yeah. ones? Definitely. Um, that's, that's a big part of the process. Um, if anyone goes into a, you know, machine learning class, then you'll learn a lot about the, the data cleaning. And part of that is figuring out which variables are relevant and trying to reduce that down to as few as possible. What you really don't want is for, you know, if I throw in like favorite color as a variable, which is probably not going to be relevant to um, how a guy performs in 10 years, but the computer starts to pick up patterns with it that are just, you know, pure coincidence, then we don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it's point. How do you decide then? How do you decide which variables seem to be the most pertinent for what you're trying to produce? Uh, it's, it's not easy. Um, it's honestly, when you, when you talk about machine learning, the actual machine learning algorithms themselves, usually aren't the hard part, it's the data cleaning. So getting, you know, finding out sometimes your radar will pick up a player speed of 300 miles an hour and like have to be able to throw that out and you have to be able to to balance between the variables that matter and the ones that don't. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to do it. And that's, that's again, something that I had to learn at Purdue. It's something I'm still learning today because there's, there's several different ways to tackle it. Now, it seems, or did I, were you ready to say something, Sarah? I don't want to hog well, the questions. Yeah, no, I just, how, is there like, like how many data points are we talking about for machine learning? Or is that even a possible thing to quantify? Is it like, are we looking at like thousands of data points or, you know, millions or? Um, it, it, yeah, it'll depend. Like I said, sometimes you don't want too many. Mm -hmm. you don't want to pick up on patterns that aren't really there but it's going to depend on the data you're looking at you know if we have player tracking you can't do once every one one position every 30 seconds because then would be halfway around the the diamond by then so that's going to be a lot more a, a lot more data whereas you know plate appearances per game it's going to be just a couple uh every night so okay it, it all depends kind of depends but it can get really, yeah, the numbers can get really big. I bet. Now you took, um, you, all right, let me see. You took, uh, it, it was um, computer science, mathematics, and statistics. Yes. Yeah, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's like, seems like a perfect union for something like machine learning. because That's exactly what I thought. I actually came into Purdue with no computer science background whatsoever. And um, I was a math major. I tax statistics on um and i had to take a computer science class for uh the college of science and i really liked it i did it early enough in my career that i said you know if i could throw this on as another major and i think i'm gonna have to i think it'll really help my statistics and i think i'm gonna have to learn a lot of this programming anyway because you know, we just have a, a increasingly data quantified world and I'd rather learn it in a classroom, a formal setting. So, uh, yeah, that is exactly the reason that, that I have those three related uh, backgrounds. So I thought they would all help each other. And I think three years into the industry now, I was right. Yeah. So when you graduated, you were looking, I mean, it sounds like machine learning is the direction you were headed to. Is that right? Yes. 
yeah, so Purdue, and I, I believe most schools, you can um, target your track. We call them tracks at College of Science for um, computer science. You know, there's, there's a, computer science is a huge field. So there are people doing cybersecurity and programming language operating systems that I barely know anything about, whereas I'm in machine learning and it's still, it's still part of the same, it's still under the same umbrella and yet extremely different. So I, I did, I was on the uh, machine learning track at Purdue. Okay. And even if that wasn't an option, I definitely would have tailored my, uh, my studies to that. Well, that's really cool that they have tracks and let you take the things that you need to yeah. get there. And it's not just, oh, if you're chemistry, you have to do chemistry or whatever. So it's it's really cool that the universities now let you do, if you have an objective like for machine learning, to be able to go yeah. there. Exactly. So what, uh, when did you know you wanted to do the machine learning? Um. I think pretty early. I knew I wanted, like I said, I, I decided I thought the computer science would help me and I didn't have to choose a, a track right away. So I got to think about it a little bit and I didn't know what machine learning even was at the time. So I didn't know that it would help me, but I had, I had an older brother, luckily, who was in computer science. He said, I think this is the track that you're going to want to do. And the further that I got along, I could see why he suggested that. And by the time I had to pick a track, which was probably after a year or two, maybe a little more, because I only had, I, I could only do it in three years, um, I knew it was machine learning. I didn't have to, you know, flip a coin the night before I told my advisor. I, I had got it figured out. Yeah. What's, where's the future going to take us? In the machine oh, learning wow. area, what's the future going to look like? Um, I think, I think we're kind of in the future. I mean... So many different industries and companies are looking for roles like mine. Um, if you go out on Indeed or LinkedIn, you're going to see people uh, with a, we're going to see job postings for people with a machine learning background. Um, and I think we're just going to, I mean, I don't see that trend dying anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's going to, you know, it's an increasingly digitized world yeah. and we're going to need, um, computers to figure out these uh, these hard problems for us because sometimes you just have so much data it's impossible to do by hand and quicker to do by computers and it's just yes. when it's quicker and easier that no really no reason not to do it so it always makes money sense if it's you find a quicker and easier way doesn't it exactly and that, that's 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 what we're looking for we want to get a degree to be able to have a job yeah <laughs> yep. yep yeah I, I think definitely uh that's that's a field to look keep an eye on uh, i think so certainly agree with you there what advice would you have someone who thinks they want to go in that field let's say a high school student and so uh this is my last question and then uh what is the advice that you would give a high school student if they think they might want to do this someday um i would say reach out to people uh maybe professors at school they're looking at or you know people on linkedin family anyone you know and just kind of Pick their brains, see if it's something you're still interested in after you hear like real firsthand experience. And the other piece of advice would be not to shy away from anything. I know like computer science can sound a little scary. Um, it definitely did to me. Like I said, I didn't know anything about it. Um, and I, I wasn't expecting to go into, into that field at the beginning. And here I am and I loved it. I still love it. So, you know, don't be afraid to try something new, even if you didn't have any experience in high school. Um, or if you don't know anything about it, you're not the only one. Well, that's very good advice. Yes, it is. I, just being open to new ideas and thoughts is great. Yeah, yeah exactly. And in college, I mean, you're going to see a lot of that. Yeah, that's for sure. But I, I like the fact that when you said, I mean, like you said, you didn't know really that it existed and let alone yeah. that you would be doing that. A lot of kids, I, I know I have a daughter in high school, and uh, if you ask her what she wants to do, she just wants to freak out. I don't know yet. I, I, I know I should know what I'm going to do the rest of my life, but I don't. And I'm like, now you don't need to know what you're going to oh, do the rest of your no, life. No, no, no. I mean, you're 17 years old. I mean, there's more people than... Then, then would admit that they're in the same boat. But I just like the fact that you really don't have to. Just come and it's something yeah. you kind of like, you're interested in, and, and uh, it's, it start exploring that and see where it takes you. Yeah. Absolutely. 
I love that you, like you said, you didn't necessarily know, you didn't maybe have the experience in high school, but boy, you jumped on it in college and now you have this really awesome career. That's, that's so yeah. cool. Do you miss our winters? No. <laughs> It's like 60 degrees right now, uh, although we are supposed to get a winter storm this weekend. I heard it might be snowing on Monday. Oh, well, it's 16 degrees and snowing here um, <laughs> so, on the Fahrenheit scale for those of you that uh, aren't local. But uh, so, yeah, it's uh, I'm thinking today I'd much rather interview you from where you are. Um, yeah, I think so. In July might be a different, might be the other way around. Oh, that's then true. I might be a little <laughs> We won't ask you in July how you're liking the heat. <laughs> I'll be happy to do interviews inside from the safety of my air conditioning. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you. We really, yes. really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you guys.